About a month ago, I built a basic workbench that has been as useful as I imagined it would be. It's been perfect for small projects like mending my bike ramp and you might have noticed that I love filming behind it too. But today we're sadly going to get rid of that functionality by making a tool wall behind the bench, which means I won't be able to stand behind it anymore. However, it will be well worth it because as useful as a tool box might be, a tool wall is 10 times as effective. So this piece was originally meant to be the tabletop for the actual bench, but only once I got it home did I realize that they had given me the wrong size. But I kept it because I knew that it would be perfect for the tool wall. So it is already cut to the perfect width, but unfortunately that does mean it's slightly shorter than I would actually like. But because I already had this, I'm just gonna try and make it work. So then these are gonna be the beams that I use to prop the tool wall up behind the bench. So they'll go something like this and you'll probably never see them. And then these are an assortment of nails that I'm going to use to hang the tools on the backboard. Now obviously you can buy pegboards and I'm not gonna lie, I do think pegboards always look very cool, but I think this will suit me better. It's a bit more DIY and it is ultimately the budget option. But obviously pretty much everyone has a tool wall and ultimately hanging up a few tools on a piece of wood with a couple of nails isn't actually that exciting. So I thought I'd try and give it a custom touch. And originally I was speaking to my cousin who runs Welsh Creative. He's the one that I ordered these caps through. And if you've seen any of my videos that require a B-roll shot, you've probably seen one of these lurking in the video. Ultimately, he just makes cool for a living. So this is my Sprocket logo as a coaster. It's basically just a piece of wood that's laser cut into my logo. And as the laser goes around, it ends up burning the edges and gives it a pretty cool look. And I've been using these for years, but for the first time ever, you can actually buy them on my website shopchaoscauses.com. But the point is, my original idea was to get him to cut out a big one of these and we'll just stick it in the middle of the tool wall and it'll look pretty cool. But obviously, since he does that for a living, he thought that was kind of boring and had a better idea. So we're still gonna be putting my Sprocket logo in the center of the tool wall, but instead of it just being a giant coaster, it's now gonna be an RGB backlit 3D Sprocket logo. His plan looks substantially better than mine, at least in SketchUp. And luckily, we still got to play with the laser cutter, first on a sheet of plexiglass, and then a satisfying cut on a piece of wood that seemed to know I was filming it because it produced its own cinematic smoke. This is how it's going to hang together. The first layer is just a sheet of plexiglass cut out into the shape of a sprocket, but it doesn't have the CC or any of the other sprocket details. It's gonna be mounted to the tool wall with a slight gap behind it so that we can put these RGB LED strips behind it. And on top of this, we're gonna mount a piece of wood that has been cut out into the proper CC logo. This really is just a giant coaster and my original idea. So this is slightly smaller than the plexiglass. So the plexiglass will help to spread the light and this will block the light. And overall, it should result in a pretty cool looking logo. But now I had to turn these pieces into reality. Since the sprocket needed to be centered, I first devised a plan to mount it to the backboard to get the effect I was looking for. I found the center of everything struggled with the strange shapes, and then tested a few methods for mounting which were quickly scrapped. But eventually, I settled on wooden blocks that would be hidden behind each letter for the plexiglass, and four screws to wrap the LEDs around that were strategically placed so you shouldn't see them. And a rough hole would also be needed for the LEDs to be powered without being visible. With the pieces cleaned up a bit and the sprocket mounting problem solved, I could get to the less serious stuff. Deciding which tools got to be on the tool wall and how they would be arranged. 
and after a couple of renditions and probably too much consideration, I settled on this layout. And personally, I think I nailed it. It was oddly satisfying nailing tools to the board, even if some of them were harmed in the process. However, the screwdrivers would be humiliated if I simply hung them up with nails. So I cut a scrap piece of wood to length, drilled a few holes in it, and screwed it to the bottom of the backboard for them to hang with pride. I figured it would be easier hammering nails in on the floor, and it was. Now the tool wall could be attached to the beams, and I then cut six blocks that would serve as spacers to mount it to the bench. So the last thing to do before it went up was sort out the LEDs. I wasn't convinced it would work, but I fed them through the hole from the back and wound them around the screw securely, and then used cable hooks to keep them under tension, which to my surprise worked. This was my first time working with plexiglass, so I first drilled a test piece to see if it would crack since I only had one sprocket. And luckily it went smoothly, so I could drill the real holes and screw it in. Attaching it to the bench was a pain in the ass, hence the lack of footage. But this made it all worthwhile. So is it perfect? Not even close. My rubber mallet is skew. There are pieces of white missing from the logo from when I peeled the tape off. The mounting system is crude. This entire row of screws on each side are purely decorative because I managed to put the beams in the wrong place the first time. And about 90% of the nails are either bent or skew. But with projects like this, flaws always seem like such a big deal when you're making it, and then once it's completed, you hardly ever notice them again. It was fun working with new materials, machines, and people, and it's definitely custom. But the most important part is that my tools are now organized and at arm's length away while working at the bench. So hit the like button if you like the finished project, let me know what you think about it down in the comments, and I'll see you on the next ride. Thank <laughs> you.